Hello everyone, it's Living Online here for Server Pro, and today I'll be showing you how to download the Wizarding World of Harry Potter mod. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter mod adds a bunch of features that are Harry Potter related. Firstly, there are three new hostile mobs, the Troll, the Dementor, and the Death Eater. Not just that, but you can perform magic by crafting a wand. When you press H, you have access to the spell book, which you can then use to perform spells. To do that, you'll have to press B to switch between the normal stance to the battle stance, otherwise you can't perform spells. This means that you'll not be able to right click on each spell to perform it. With the spell book, you can also upgrade your spells by using your XP. That's not all though, there are a few other items in this mod, such as a broomstick you can actually sit on and use. There are two other mobs added called Inferius and Acromantula, and lastly, as an omen to the movies, there's a Marauder's map that shows mobs' footsteps around you, and also a Lumos light block that you can right click to illuminate your surroundings with. To download the mod, you need to head to this link. It'll be in the description. To find the versions you want to download, you'll have to head over to the files section. There you can scroll down and choose which version you want. I'll be selecting the latest version. To download, simply press the arrow and after a couple seconds, it will automatically download the mod file. When the download is finished, you want to drag it to your desktop so it's easier to follow the next few steps. Since this mod requires Forge, you'll need to install Forge. To install Forge, you'll firstly have to head to this page, the link will be in the description. Then, all you have to do on the left is select the version of the mod you downloaded. You can click on the versions as well to expand your search. However, when you know what version to click, simply click on Installer on the recommended subheading. That'll take you to this page where you'll simply have to wait a couple seconds before pressing Skip. It should take 2 seconds for that file to download, so when it's done, just double click it. When this window opens up, install client should be ticked and everything else should stay the same, but when that's done, press OK. A window will pop up installing all the required files you need, but in no time the installation will be finished. Only close the tab when you see it says successfully installed. Now that we've installed Forge, we can make sure it's working correctly by opening up the Minecraft launcher. Then you'll know it's running smoothly if the launcher with the version you selected appears on the bottom left. For me, it appears correctly, so now we can move on to installing the mod on our client. Now that you've downloaded the mod and installed Forge, you'll need to drag the mod into the correct folders on your client. For this, all you have to do is press the Windows key and the R key at the same time on your keyboard. That'll open up this small window. All you have to do is type percentage app data percentage and press enter. That'll open up this files explorer window. All you have to do is find the .minecraft folder and open it up and then find the mods folder. If you don't see a mods folder, you can just create a new folder and name it mods as it'll work the same. Once you're in that folder though, all you have to do is drag in the mod file you downloaded just before. And that's it, the mod is installed on your client. Now that you've downloaded the mod, installed Forge and installed the mod on your client, you'll need to install it on your server as well. You can do so by heading to the server.pro website. When you're there, access your server control panel. Then on your dashboard, make sure the type is set to Forge and that the version is the same version as Forge downloaded on your client and the mod you downloaded. Before proceeding, make sure the server is offline and then head into the files section. In the files section, there'll be a mods folder. Inside that folder is where you want to drag in the mod file downloaded earlier. When that's done, you quickly want to turn on your server so the mod is fully enabled. Then make sure to head to your dashboard and copy the host name. Open up your Minecraft launcher and make sure Forge is selected. Then when your game loads up, head to the multiplayer section. Click add server and in the server address section, paste the host name. When you're in, simply open up the creative menu and you'll see that the Harry Potter items are there. If they're not, you may have missed a step in this tutorial, so make sure to go back and refollow them. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to see more from our channel. Thank you for watching.